Mr. Speaker, yesterday marked the official end of America's nine-year war in Iraq. In a low-key ceremony in Baghdad, U.S. troops lowered the American flag of command that flew over the Iraqi capital. The 4,000 remaining U.S. service members in Iraq will leave by this year's end. The Iraq War was a painful and difficult time, extraordinarily costly in terms of Americans, America's lives and resources. Nearly 4,500 Americans, including 45 Nebraskans, were killed in Operation Iraqi Freedom. 227 Nebraskans were wounded in combat. Tens of thousands of Iraqis lost their lives. We lost good men and women, individuals full of life and blessed with talent, whose proud family has awaited their return to the country they love so dear and serve so well. But in spite of our wounds, we are proud. Proud of our fallen heroes, proud of the veterans who have come back to us, proud of their sacrifice, proud of their noble vision that has significantly changed the global environment, where democratic ideals are now making steady gains everywhere. The work of our troops steadily done in the, midst of, in the midst of extensive public debate and strategy of deliberations about the war was the strength of this mission. These troops achieved what was set before them. The victories were theirs. Their unwavering commitment, their skill, and their bravery got the job done. The troops' efforts unbound and Iraqi people held hostage for decades by an egomaniacal dictator. Insurgencies led by terrorists seeking to wreak havoc and disorder were put down by our troops. Space was created to allow Iraqis the time necessary to build the foundations of a representative government and a more open society. But there are still challenges and significant obstacles. It would have been preferable, Mr. Speaker, for a small stay-behind force to remain for ongoing response and stabilization efforts. The way forward will not be easy. But today, Iraqis determine Iraq's future. No longer constricted by the dictates of a despot, they have held elections, they have written a constitution, and hopefully they will build a culture that respects the rights and dignity of all of their people. America and the world needs a stabilized Iraq. Our security is strengthened by it, and we will continue a strong diplomatic relationship to help achieve it. An Iraq that protects the rights of all of its people, Sunni and Shiite, Christian and Yazidi, and employs a government that maintains order and preserves liberties, will be an Iraq that can help transform the entire Middle East looking for a new way forward. The foundation for this has been laid after much toil and bloodshed by valiant American soldiers who return to us now as modern-day heroes. Mr. Speaker, I yield back.